Hello all, welcome to EC Electronics. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the network tree structures. We will be discussing what is network tree, what is the core tree and also we will be discussing a very important topic which is the tie sets and tie set matrices. Okay, so these are actually very important area of network theory subject discussing about the network graph, network trees, incident matrix, tie set matrix, all those things. Okay, so in this video, we are going to actually discuss about network trees and tie sets. Okay, so let us see about network tree and tie sets. In this video, we are going to discuss about the network trees topic. Okay, so we were discussing about the network graphs and network topology in the network theory subject. In today's video, we will be discussing about network trees and also another topic we will be discussing which is called the tie set matrix. Okay, so after discussing the trees, we will be going to the tie set matrix. We will be uh, doing some questions connected to both the areas or both the topics. So let us see first what is the network tree. So we have discussed that there is a network graph which can form which we can form from a given circuit diagram so uh, we are going to form a network graph structure from the given circuit diagram of an electrical circuit given to us and from the network graph we can form trees okay so talking about a tree or a network tree it is actually a sub graph with all the nodes Okay, so that is one important point. When we are going to form a tree from a graph, it should include all the nodes present in the given graph. Okay, when we are doing example, you will get a very clear picture. But just, just know, if you are being given a graph and you have to form a tree out of it, means you have to include all the nodes in the given graph. So, the first condition is that the number of nodes in the graph is equal to the number of nodes in the tree. But the number of branches in the graph should be greater than the number of branches in the tree. So it is very clear that we are forming the trees from a graph by removing of certain branches from the graph. Okay. So as a result, the number of branches in the graph will be greater or in reverse we can say the number of branches in the tree will be less than that of the total number of branches present in the given graph. Okay. Now let us do a small example on forming the network trees okay or the tree structures from a graph. So I am going to draw a graph here and from this graph I am going to form all the possible trees okay. So this graph is consisting of three nodes only 1, 2 and 3 okay and connecting these nodes there are branches okay like this and the branch names are a here b here c here and d here so i'm going to form trees from this graph okay so when i'm going to form trees the first tree i'm going to form is by removing of the that is i'm going to first form a tree with only two branches but it is including all the nodes so i'm going to draw the nodes as it is one two and three and i'm going to include only two branches okay so the branches are b and c so this is my one tree similarly i can form another one with only the branches A and B. So I'm going to again mark my nodes as it is 1, 2 and 3. So here I'm going to include only the branch B and A. Okay, so just A and B only. Okay, but I have included all the three nodes. Okay, so the nodes we will keep as it is but we are going to remove some of the branches to form the network tree. And another important point which I have actually forgot to uh, explain while explaining the basics is that when we are drawing a tree structure, there should not be any closed loop. So mark it as a very important point. No closed loops. Okay, so no closed loops or no loops should be present inside a tree structure. So when we are 
drawing a graph there can be loops see this is a loop this is a loop that is abc is a loop cd is a loop but in the tree you cannot find any loops okay so that is the difference between a graph and a tree that is a basic difference okay now again we can continue the process of forming of trees so here one two three as it is now we are going to include only these two branches which is a and c okay so a and c branch we have included again we can continue one two and three now i'm going to include the branches a and d okay so a and d branch have included for this tree and the last tree which we can form is this one two three and here i'm going to include the branches b and d okay so the branches will be b and d so these are the total number of trees which we can form out of this given graph okay so uh, if you observe the trees individually you can see that in the tree there are n number of nodes and n minus 1 number of branches okay so if n is the number of nodes in the tree then there is n minus 1 number of branches see here here n is 3 and 3 minus 1 which is 2 number of branches are only present here also 2 branches here also 2 branches here also 2 branches here also 2 branches okay so in general these trees have n nodes and n minus 1 branches okay so this is the general way of a tree now let us discuss about a small another topic which is called code tree okay consider that consider this tree okay here you can see that in this tree structure we have removed two branches from our graph to form this tree right which are those branches the branches a and d so we have ignored or removed the branch d and a to form this tree right so these branches which we have removed to form a tree structure is called link or link branches okay so the branches which have been removed is called link or link branch okay so in forming a tree from a graph certain branches are removed or opened we call them as link or link branches okay so that is another important term and the set of all links is called the code tree okay so for this tree the code tree is a and d the branch a and d forms the core tree for this given tree and similarly for this tree which will be the core tree c and d will form the core tree because for this tree we have forming for forming this second tree structure we have removed the branches c and d so that forms the core tree structure and again the sum of all link branches and the sum of the tree branches will give you your original graph so that is another equation okay so sum of link branch plus tree branch will give you your graph original graph okay we'll take this tree here which are the tree branches the tree branches are b and b and c and which are the link branches the link branches are a and d so sum of these tree branches and the link branches will give you your original graph this if you add the link branches to the structure that is a you add here and if you add d here that is if you add a here and if you add d here you will get your original graph so that is the equations meaning sum of the link branches plus tree branches will give you your original graph structure okay so 
that's all about the network trees core tree and also the link branch or the links also there is another equation connecting to the number of links and also the total number of loops for a graph okay so consider that a given graph is having n number of nodes then b number of branches okay so there are n number of nodes and b number of branches and to form a tree structure we need the number of links or link branches is equal to b minus n plus 1 okay so to form a tree structure out of this graph we have to remove this num number of links that is b minus n plus 1 number of links we have to take or we have to remove or we have to open okay so we'll take this example here the n value is equal to 3 branch value is equal to there are 1 2 3 4 branches right so the number of links will be number of links or link branches number of link branches is equal to here uh, b is 4 so 4 minus 3 plus 1 which will be 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So, in order to form a tree out of this graph, we have to remove or we have to open two branches. That is the number of link branches is equal to 2. See here, we have formed this tree by removing these two branches. Here also we have removed two branches. Here also we have removed two branches. Same for here and here also. Okay. So, we have to remove how many number of branches or the number of links is equal to B minus N plus 1. And this number is equal to Again, there is a relation for this equation. That is, this is equal to the number of loops present in the graph. Number of loops in the graph. Or the number of loops you can form in the graph. Okay. So, here, the number of link branches is equal to 2. Same is equal to the number of loops. Right. We will check for it. If you see this graph, you can see there are two loops, which is A, B, C and C, D. Okay, so in generally we can say that the equation for the link branches, link branches is equal to loops possible is equal to B minus N plus 1. So this is very very important equation. Okay, so in order to find the number of loops you can form or the number of link branches you have to remove to form a tree structure. The equation is B minus N plus 1. Where B is the number of branches in the graph. N is the number of nodes plus 1. Okay. So, that is the equation. Okay. So, we have discussed about what is a tree structure. What is a core tree. What are link branches. Also, what is the equation for finding the link branches and also the number of loops. Okay. Next. So, we have discussed about the basics of network trees. The core tree and also the link branches. Okay, so uh, next we are going to discuss that if a graph is given to you, how can you uh, say that by looking into the graph, how many number of trees can be formed? Okay, so there is an equation for finding the number of trees which can be formed out of a graph if the graph is a complete graph. Now, what is a complete graph means? It is a graph where every pair of distinct vertices is connected by unique edges or unique branches that is if all the vertices that is every distinct vertex is connected by unique pair of edges means it is called a complete graph another uh, clue for finding the complete graph is that every vertex will be having equal number of branches connected to it you can see that here node 1 or uh, vertex 1 is having 3 branches. Here also node 2 has 3 branches. Here also 3. Here also 3. So, it is a complete graph. Here also you can see 3 branches connected here, 3 branches here, 3 branches here and 3 branches in center. So, every node is connected with a unique set or number of branches. Okay. So, these type of graphs are called complete graphs and if the graph is a complete graph, there is an equation for finding the number of trees that can be formed out of these type of graphs and the equation is given by 
n raised to n minus 2 where n is the number of number of nodes or number of vertex you can call the uh, node is vertex also right so it is n is a number of nodes or vertex and the equation is number of trees trees is equal to n raised to n minus 2 okay so that is the equation so here for this question let us see let us first calculate how many link branches are there for this question for this graph you can see that the number of nodes n is equal to 1 2 3 4 number of branches b is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the number of link branches so link branches means in order to form a tree you have to remove at least this much number of branches okay so link branches is equal to b minus n plus 1 that is 6 minus 4 plus 1 that is equal to 2 plus 1 is 3 so 3 branches if you remove you will get a tree only if you remove 3 branches you will get a tree so the tree again the criteria for a tree is that there should not be any open sorry any closed loops okay only then it forms a tree okay so here this is the number of link branches and how many number of trees can be formed n is 4 4 raised to 4 minus 2 that is 4 square which is 60 number of trees can be formed out of this graph so if you remove every 3 3 pair of branches you will get how many number of trees 16 number of trees you will get okay now moving on to this this graph here number of nodes is 1 2 3 4 n is equal to 4 then branches b is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 again so you'll get the link branches or links is equal to here also 3 and number of trees will be here also 4 raised to 4 minus 2 that will be equal to 16 okay so if the graph is a complete graph you can use this equation and the equation is n raised to n minus 2 this is the equation for finding the number of trees can, that can be formed out of that given complete graph okay only if the graph is complete graph the equation is that is applicable if you see the first example which we have done in this video that is while explaining the basics of trees i have done an example in that case you cannot apply this equation why because it is not a complete graph if you see all the vertices are not having equal number of branches connected to it so that is a simple uh, trick to find the uh, complete graph and the definition of a complete graph is that every distinct vertex should be connected with unique set of branches so the first graph we have discussed in this video is not a complete graph and hence it is not possible to apply this equation okay so uh, sometimes you may have that doubt why we are not getting the number of trees is by this equation that is n raised to n minus 2 that equation why it is not applicable there why because there the graph given is not a complete graph so you cannot apply this equa uh, equation you just you can only uh, form the trees and we can count the trees okay so this is the equation applicable only for complete graphs okay next we are going to see about the tie set and the tie set matrices so next we are going to see the concepts of tie set ties and tie set matrix okay so before explaining what is a tie set and a tie set matrix i would like to uh, explain how i'm going to form a tree out of this graph okay with that tree we'll explain what is a tie set and what is tie set matrix so here this question or this graph we have drawn just before so here how many nodes are there there are n is equal to 4 nodes and branches b is equal to totally 1 to 6 totally 6 branches are there and the links are or the link branches how many link branches will be there link branches is equal to b minus n plus 1 that is 6 minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 3 okay so if you are removing 3 branches you can form a tree out of this right so this much is clear and another important thing is there this equation is also the equation for the number of loops that is present inside this graph which is 3 okay 
Now consider that I am going to form a tree out of this graph. I am going to form a tree here. And in my tree, I am going to remove three branches. And the three branches I am going to remove is 1 is this branch with naming 1. Then this branch with naming 4 and this branch with naming 5. Okay, so I am going to remove these three branches and I am going to form a tree. So the tree I am forming is this 1, 2, 3 and 4. So again all the nodes in your graph will be present or intact in your tree. That is again another important criteria to be satisfied for forming a tree. So this is my tree which I am forming and I have removed which all branches here. I have removed the branches 1, 2. This is my one branch which I have removed. This is one. Again I have removed a branch four and I have removed another branch five. So these branches which are marked in blue colors are my link branches and the branches that are marked in red color have not given the names. So it is three, two and six. So the branches in red color are my tree branches that is present inside the tree. Then the branches which are marked in blue color are the link branches or the branches which are being removed. And these branches together you can call it as core tree. Okay. These things we have explained actually. But I am ju just telling it once again. Okay. So this is the blue color is representing the core tree. Red color is representing a tree. And tree plus core tree will give you a total graph or your entire graph. Okay. Now let us come back to our point which is called tie set. Okay. So I am just removing these blue colored branches once again. Okay. So this is my tree. Now consider that in my tree. So this is my tree, right? So in my tree, I am going to put back one of my link branch and I am going to form a loop. Okay, so three link branches are there, that is branch 1, 4 and 5. Out of these three branches, which are the link branches, I am going to put back one branch into my tree. That is, I am going to put, consider that I am going to put back my branch 1. Okay, consider that I am going to put back my link branch 1 back to my tree. And hence, I form a loop here, right? You can see when you put back your one, that is the branch one, into your tree, you will get a loop, right? Earlier, there was no loop in the tree because we know that generally in trees, there won't be any closed loops or closed path. But when you put back any of the link branches back to your tree, you will get a closed path, right? And this loops these type of loops which we form by putting back any of the one link branch is called a f loop or a fundamental loop and it can be called as a tie set okay that is your Link branch with the loop is called a tie set and this is called a fundamental loop. So when, a, when we are talking about a fundamental loop, there will be only one loop present in that structure or in that tree structure. It is actually not a tree structure anymore because there is a closed path. But it was a tree structure but we, when we put back a link branch back to the tree, we got a loop there. And that is a fundamental loop or an F loop. Okay. And it is also called as a tie set. Okay. So that is a tie set here. And this is one fundamental loop I have formed. Again, I am going to call this as F loop 1. Then again, I am going to form one more loop. That is one more fundamental loop I am going to form in the same tree. I will draw the tree once again. Because... If it is fundamental loop, the tree can have only one loop. So you have to draw it once again. So this is my tree. Right. You don't need this anymore. Okay. So this is my tree. And in this tree, I am going to put back the link branch with 
naming four okay and again i get a tree with a single loop this is again a f loop or a tie set or this is again a fundamental loop okay so this fundamental loop i am going to call by the naming f loop 4 okay why because it is formed by uh, putting back or keeping back your link branch 4 so i am going to call the fundamental loop with name 4 you can call any other name also that is not a problem okay again your tree branches you have to draw back 6 is here 2 is here and 3 is here okay so if you see this structure it is only having one loop and it is called the fundamental loop so this is another tie set or f loop which we have formed again we can form one more f loop right because for your original graph there were three link branches right so you can form one more f loop or fundamental loop that i'm going to draw again i'll remove this i'm going to draw back my tree One, two, and three. Okay. Okay. I'll draw it here. So, one, two, three, and four. So this was my three, six, two, and branch three. So in this tree, if you are going to put back your third link branch which is branch 5 like this you will get your third fundamental loop and i'm going to call it by the name fundamental loop 5 okay so now you can see in the board there are three fundamental loops formed this is fundamental loop 1 this is fundamental loop 4 fundamental loop 5 so just i'm giving the namings 1 4 5 because the link branches are of names 1 4 and 5 now the direction or the orientation of this loop will be in the direction of your link branch okay i'll mark it inside so this is your one fundamental loop and it is having the orientation or direction like this why because your link branch is pointed in this direction again here for this f loop it is in this direction why because your link branch is in that direction here again the f loop is having this orientation or in this direction it is forming again it is as per the orientation of your link branch okay now let us talk about the tie set matrix so the tie set matrix is actually a rectangular matrix which you form by taking rows as your fundamental loops and columns as branches okay i'll write that thing first here so this is a that is your uh tie set matrix so if this is your tie set matrix this is a rectangular matrix which is having columns as loops or your fundamental loops form the sorry the rows are the fundamental loops and the columns are the branches that is total number of branches present in your graph will be written here and this matrix form is called the tie set matrix i'll tell it once again a tie set matrix is a rectangular matrix which is actually the representation of your tie set and the fundamental loop okay that is this rectangular matrix is having rows here you write the f loops its names and in the columns you write the branches the total branches of your graph okay so let us let us see how to form the tie set matrix for this these tie sets or for this graph okay here i am going to first form write the rows here so the rows are represented by the fundamental loops right so which all are the fundamental loops here i am gi giving the namings 1 4 5 so the fundamental loops are 1 4 and 5 so these are the these are the rows okay now branches 
you have to write his columns which all are the branches the branches are 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 all the branches you have to write so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay so this completes the structure of your tie set matrix now so here you are writing branches okay now how to write the element values inside your matrix let us see okay here first you have to take which row you are going to write so uh, you can have a different approach also but uh, how i'm going to write is i'm going to write that is i'm going to first complete the first row then move to the second row then the third row likewise i'm going to write so when i'm going to write my first row i'm going to look only into the fundamental loop one so this is the fundamental loop one right and i'm going to look only there then i'm going to look which all branches are connected to my first fundamental loop or this row so this row represents so first we'll write only this row okay so this row represents the fundamental loop one which all branches are connected to that loop we'll see and we'll see also the direction of the branches if the branches branches are directed in the same direction of the loop then we'll put the values of those elements as one if the direction of the branches are opposite to the direction of the loops then we put the values of elements as minus one so we'll get to know while i'm doing this how the thing is going to be actually coming to the matrix or in this diagram okay so first we are going to fill up your first row so we are going to look for fundamental loop one okay so which all branches are connected to f loop one so this is f loop one okay so which all branches are connected here branch one two and three okay so the branch one two and three are connected here now we'll take first branch that is branch one and the direction of the loop and the direction of the branch are they in same direction yes why because we are actually giving the direction of loop in the same direction of our branch one which is the link branch which we have explained just before okay so the direction of the loop and the branch are same so we'll put the value as one okay then next let's move to the branch 2 which is also present in your f loop 1 the direction of the branch and the loop are the same yes so again 1 okay next let us look for your third branch which is again part of your f loop 1 so the branch 3 and this loop are they in same direction yes See here it is coming this way. The branch is also in this way. Okay. So it is again coming this way. The branch and the loop are in same direction. Or the orientation is same. So again one for the third branch also. Now talking about the four, five and six. These branches. These branches are actually not part of your F loop one. Right. So you will put the values as 0 0 and 0 so this is how you form the rows so for first row the value is 1 1 1 0 0 0 next moving to your second row so for second row you have to take your f loop 4 okay so this is your f loop 4 now we have to look here okay so in f loop 4 there are three branches which are 4 3 4 and 6 okay so talking about your branch 1 it is not a part of f loop 4 so it is 0 branch 2 also not part of f loop 4 so it is again 3 0 then about the branch 3 see here this is your branch 3 the branch the loop is in this direction but the branch 3 is pointed downwards right so they are in opposite direction so the value of the branch 3 here it will be minus 1 why because f loop 4 its direction and the direction of branch 3 are opposite okay now next 
Branch is 4. Branch 4 and the loop are in same direction. So it is 1, 5. Branch 5 is not a part of F loop 4. So it is 0, 6. Branch 6 and F loop 4 in same direction. See here it is pointed in this way and 6 branch 6 also in same direction. So it is 1. So this completes your second row. The values are 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 0 and 1. Now moving to your third row. Now you have to look in this loop. Here which all elements, which all branches are part of F loop 5. So this is your F loop 5. Okay. So for F loop 5, the branches 2, 6 and 5 are part of it. So the branch 1 is not there. Then for branch 2, actually they are in opposite direction. Right. See here, the branch is actually in this way, but your, sorry, the loop is in this direction, but the branch is in the opposite direction. So the value will be minus 1. So if the directions are opposite means minus 1 will be the value in tight set matrix. If the uh, directions are same for the loop and the branch then the value will be 1. That is a condition and if a branch is not a part of F loop means the value will be 0. Then for the third branch it is actually not a part of your F loop 5 and also branch 4 not a part. Branch 5 is in same direction. And branch 6, yeah, branch 6 is also in opposite direction. So, this forms your third and the last row for your tie set matrix. 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. So, this completes the formation of your tie set for this given graph. So, this for this graph, we have four, three fundamental loops. That is, three fundamental loops is actually possible. Because the number of loops that can be formed is B equal to N. Sorry, the fundamental loop uh, can be uh, calculated using the equation B minus N plus 1. Right. So, it is 3. So, we can form 3 loops here. And we have formed it. So, we have discussed about the network trees in this video. And we have discussed what is a tree. What, how can we form a tree? How many number of trees can be formed and we have also discussed about what is a core tree, what is a tie set and also the tie set matrix. Okay, so these topics are actually very important part of network topology. So, uh, in these days we are actually covering the network uh, graph structures, tree structures, incident matrix, all those things. So, in this video we have discussed about some important topics. Okay, so if you found the video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.